And I talk this listening to our children because I'm a father of seven myself. I work hard in every field, that's it. <laughs> we are investing more resources in our education sector. In the last two years, we have increased the budget for education by 127 billion. And we have done so deliberately. We have hired 50,000 teachers more. Because if you listen to Nduta and the challenges that people in our informal settlements go through, in our rural areas go through, there are many classrooms without a teacher. Many schools across Kenya continue to have gaps in our education. And by so doing, we deny more children the opportunity to become their best. It is the reason why we are putting more resources in our TVETs and universities through our student-centered new funding model so that we can address the challenge of children who come from vulnerable backgrounds like Nduta. It is a responsibility that I have and it's a responsibility that we share as parents, as citizens, as leaders. And I talk this listening to our children because I'm a father of seven myself. I work hard in every field, that's it. <laughs> so, and, and it is something that we must do for our children. We must give every opportunity, the best opportunity that we have to our children. It is the reason why Again, in January, we will be hiring another 20,000 teachers. It is the reason why we, we, we will continue to engage with our universities, to engage with our TVETs, to expand opportunities, to create new programs that will support our children. I want to encourage parents, and I speak here as a parent myself, yeah? I want to encourage parents to take time with our children, to get concerned about their children. Let us not dump our children in school or in other places. It is our responsibility to shape the character to shape the future of our children. And I must commend the President's Award Scheme for what they are doing to our children. <laughs> developing the character, developing the integrity, developing um, skills of our young people. And I am persuaded that through this scheme, I'm told there are 138,000 um, young people in this scheme. And the target is to have a million in the next five years. I want to commit here that we will do everything and I want Waziri and your team to tell us what we need to do to make sure that we give more opportunities to our children between the ages of 14 and 24 to be part of this scheme. <laughs> your achievements reflect the positive impact you have made, not only in your lives, but also in the different communities that we all come from. Your stories, and I have listened very carefully to at least the two, to Emmanuel and Duta, 
and the power of selfless service demonstrates our resilience and determination. You have consistently demonstrated a willingness to step out of your comfort zones and face various challenges, including outdoor expeditions, and in the process developed valuable skills that will serve you well in future leadership and in national service. Without a doubt, these experiences have strengthened your character and empowered you to become leaders. Listening to Emmanuel and the challenges he has had being a leader of his team, that sometimes you're leading people who are not willing to be led. <laughs> and sometimes there are complaints all over the place at the pace at which you are moving. For Emmanuel, he is accused of moving slowly. <laughs> For some of us, we are accused of moving fast and leaving others. So welcome, Emmanuel, to the club of leaders. <laughs> that is what leadership calls for, patience, focus, and you keep moving. You represent the finest of our young people who are motivated and equipped to carry the hopes of communities and actualize our nation's aspirations for a brighter tomorrow at a time when we all desire positive change. I am pleased to share that the government's transformation agenda aligns with the vision of empowering the young people of our nation through education and human capital development. We aim to cultivate a nation of well-educated, highly skilled, empowered, connected, and engaged young men and women who will drive Kenya's development now and into the future. And it is the reason why my first assignment when I took over office was to appoint a presidential task force to look at our education. Because having been a minister myself of higher education before, I realized the value of education and the importance of making sure that we have deployed every resource available to make sure that we get our education right. And especially for Kenya, because the biggest asset that we have as a country is our human capital. And the way to deploy and to use this great asset of our human capital appropriately is to make sure that we sharpen it through education, training, knowledge acquisition, and skills development. I know we are beginning exams for both KCSC and KIPSEA next week. Let me take this occasion as we celebrate this awardees to also wish the 965,000 of our students who will be participating in our KCSE examination and the 1.3 million of our pupils who will be participating in KIPSEA examinations, my very best wishes, my message of good luck to all of them as they undertake these exams. May God's guidance, fortitude, and grace be with them. And as we have agreed as a government, the Ministry of Education has concluded all the arrangements of making sure that these examinations are undertaken from next week all the way for the next uh, month or so, making sure that there is adequate security, there is adequate um, supervision, all the invigilators are in place, and I want to ask all our students to take these exams, understanding that the prayers of their parents and all of us is on them 